Class, what's up? Welcome to another video. Today we are moving on, moving a little bit away from 4.4 .4 into 4.5, and really all that means is now instead of just writing out all of this information, we are going to write out the information and also graph. Okay? Um, I'm going to let you know right now this video is going to be a little longer than I would like. Uh, however, we're going to spend a couple of days on this in class, so we're going to we're going to watch a longer video one night, and then you will not have another video for tomorrow. All right. So this stuff it starts the same as what we've been doing. Okay, I'm still giving you a function, a rational function, where we have polynomials on top and bottom. We still need to factor so we can start to figure out things about the domain and holes and vertical asymptotes. All right, so really, some of this is going to look very familiar. Um, let's see here. All right, so I have 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change that to x squared minus x minus 6. All right, so I factored a 2 out of the numerator. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to continue factoring. All right, so 2, I know I have quadratics, so I can break them into two pieces. And let's see here. Getting to negative 1 from factors of negative 6. I think we're going to have to go x minus 3 and x plus 2. And let's go x minus 3, x minus 1. All right. So, we now have completely factored this as much as we possibly can. I'm very sorry, I should put an r of x here. And I now know for my domain, I'm going to have all reals, except for x cannot equal 1 and 3. That comes from our normal work with domain, the denominator. At this point, what you're going to have to kind of recognize is, I can cancel. All right, I can cancel. So, to simplify this, I can go further. I can say that r of x will equal 2, x plus 2, all over x minus 1. All right. So, let's think about this. I know, then, that there will be a hole because I was able to factor out this, or sorry, cancel out this factor of x minus 3. So, I know there's going to be a hole at 3. I also know I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 because that's what's left in the denominator. I also can kind of figure out end behavior, okay? I can also figure out end behavior um, if I'm looking here either at the original or even at my factored form or like simplified form. I have the same degree in the top and bottom same degree. So if we have same degree, we look at the ratio of the leading coefficients, or 2 over 1, 2 over 1. So I know that I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Now, we have some more stuff to do. We have some more stuff to do. We need to figure out the y value of the whole. So we plug in 3, let's see here, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So now I know my whole. Now these next two pieces, x-intercept, y-intercept, these are similar concepts to things that we've already done, uh, but we, we need to work on these, okay? This is something we have not done yet, so this, is, I guess, is technically new, or something that we're reintroducing. To get x-intercepts, we know that y must equal 0. All right, so I'm going to plug in 0 for y. And when I go to cross multiply, what's going to happen? Anything, anytime, it doesn't matter what's in the denominator. When I multiply it by 0, it's always going to cancel. All right, always. So I know that really what I'm doing, guys, I'm just getting the zeros of the numerator. I'm just getting the zeros of the numerator. So let's see if I keep going here. That should be a negative 2. So I know I'm going to have an x-intercept at negative 2, comma 0. All right. 
Let's make a note real quick, just so we have it. I wish I had different colors. I'm running out. Let's make a note here. For x-intercepts, all you have to do is find the zeros of the numerator. All right, so make sure you understand that. Why is that working again? And I know I'm spending a little bit more time on this now to hopefully save time later. When you go and you plug in zero, whenever you start to cross multiply, it's going to make whatever's in the denominator, like when you multiply it by the zero, it's going to cancel all that out, and I'm only going to care about the top. Okay, so let's figure this out now and understand it to make it easier later on. Now lastly, y-intercept, that's easy. All we do is we say x has to be zero. That doesn't change anything. You can plug it in pretty much anywhere. You could plug it into the original. You can plug it into your simplified. I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in here. Zero plus two is two. Two times two is four. Four divided by negative one is negative four. So zero, negative four. Now we get to put all of this together, guys. This is this is the fun part. This is the new part. We just literally have to put all of these different pieces together on our graph and kind of see what's going on. So, I'll slide down, maybe zoom in a little bit, actually no, let's not, because then I'll mess up. Let me refocus that. Okay, we know we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, so we plot it. We know we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, so we plot it. Uh, what else do we know? We knew that we had a hole at 3 comma 5, so we plot it. Uh, we knew that we had an x-intercept at negative 2 comma 0. We also knew that we had a y-intercept at 0, negative 4. So now I have all of my puzzle pieces, or all of my clues, so that I can graph this. Now the one last thing that I need you guys to kind of keep in mind, or maybe a couple things, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on this one, hopefully hopefully the next ones will go quicker. I want you to think about this, and this goes back to the very first video. Do we notice that down here, this x minus 1, technically this x minus 1 has a degree of 1, right? It's only occurring one time, there's no multiplicity, which means it is odd which means it is going to approach the vertical asymptote from opposite ends. Opposite ends. Because it was odd, it's going to go opposite ends, which hopefully makes sense then when I maybe take my pen here. It looks like I'm going to have to do one of these. And we want to get really, really close to our asymptotes. But right, does this make sense? I'm going down as we could see from our points, it's going down and approaching this asymptote from the negative direction, which means then it's going to have to approach on the opposite side from the positive direction. So I do one of these, something like this, and I get really close to the asymptote. All right, so again, because that degree of the uh, x minus 1 was odd, it's going to have to go opposite, opposite ways. Down, up, up, down. The other thing, just to kind of keep in mind here, people ask like how many pieces there's going to, how many pieces will there be? It depends on the number of vertical asymptotes. If I have one vertical asymptote, well then there's going to be two different pieces, right? If I had one and two. If I had two vertical asymptotes, there'd probably have to be one and then another and then another. So we'll see that in a little bit. But keep that in mind, that the number of pieces that you're graphing has to do with the number of vertical asymptotes. All right, so I know I spent a lot of time on that one, going through some little information and little tips. Hopefully they will help, and it will make these next few go faster. All right, so if I can get this to work, shoot. All right, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. So. Um, we have a new function. I believe, why is it not zooming in? 
There we go, that's better. Okay. Um, I think we're going to have to factor by grouping here. We have four terms. I see something in common here and in common here. Yeah, yeah. So let us do that. So 4x squared, which will leave x minus 1, and then minus 1 x minus 1. Okay, good. We're on the right track. Oh. If I keep going here, that will be x minus 1, 4x squared minus 1, over 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. Okay, so we're going to have a 2x and an x. And we're going to need to go 5 and 2, right? 5 times 1 is 5, 2 times 1 is 2, which together, when they're both negative, will make up the negative 7 that we needed from the original. All right, so this is good enough for now. Um, when we come down and simplify, I might factor the top a little bit more, but what I want you guys to see here is we now can go and we can say the domain we know x cannot equal 5 halves or 1, right? We also know that we can go a step further now and we can say see you later so that my r of x function is 4x squared minus 1 all over 2x minus 5. Now, I think it might be a good idea just to understand we can keep going with the top, that's a difference of squares we can go 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1. I think that might make the next part a little bit easier. But that is what I'm kind of looking for here. I really need you to understand that because this x minus 1 cancels, we're going to have a hole at positive 1. All right. At this point in time, you can kind of plug in that 1. Uh, I don't know. It, it depends. It might be easier to plug it in here just because 1 squared is easy, so 4 minus 3 is 3, 2 minus 5 is negative 3, 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. You could also plug in the 1 here, don't worry, as long as you plug it in somewhere into your simplified equation. Now, x-intercepts, I'm not going to go through the explanation again, I just need you to remember, it's the zeros of numerator, and that is why I factored out the numerator, because now I know that it should just be at plus or minus one half, right? If I look here, I should get the zeros of the numerator, so plus or minus one half. Y intercept, got to plug in zero. Let's see, it doesn't matter where you do it. I'm going to plug it in right here because I know that this will cancel, so you'll just have negative one over negative five, so positive one fifth. Again, that's me just plugging in zero. Now, we know that the vertical asymptote should be what's ever left over, or what's still there in the denominator of my function. So this is where I will get my x is equal to 5 halves. And this we're, ha we're going to have a little bit more work to do, I think, because in the original, we have a cubic. We have a squared, which means we are top heavy, or the top has a greater degree, which means we need to long divide. All right, so we come down here, we write it 4x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 1, 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. Let's see here, I need a 2x because that will make 4x cubed minus 14x squared plus 10x, and then we have to change all the signs, so minus, plus, minus, which means cancel, which means 10x squared, negative 11x plus 1. We are almost done, but not quite. We can still multiply this by 5, so I'm going to go f plus 5, which means this will be 10x squared, and what I want you guys to understand here is you know, you understand, hopefully, that this is going to cancel and we're just going to have x left, right? Can you continue to long divide once the degree 
is larger than the degree of what's left, left over in the remainder? No. So really, I mean, I can stop right here. I know that whatever I put here doesn't matter. This is going to cancel. This will be an X, and I can't do it anymore. All right? So this is what our quotient is, and this is linear, which means it is oblique. All right? This is oblique. We are now ready to graph everything. All right? So vertical asymptote at 5 halves. That's 2.5. So something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, but please make it as nice as possible. We also have an oblique asymptote at 2x plus 5. So that is y-intercept of 5, slope of 2. So I'm going to dot all these first, and then I'll make my dashed line. Something like that. And then boom, 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 boom. All right, you want to make that nice. Good. What else? We have some other some other tips. We have a hole at 1, negative 1. We have x-intercepts at plus or minus one-half. We have a y-intercept at one-fifth, zero comma one-fifth. All right. I think that's about all we have. So use these pieces to help us. All right. We have this. We know that there are no other x-intercepts, so it can't come back up. It has to just do one of these and get really, really close to that vertical asymptote and then the same thing over here use the asymptote to help you draw this guy something like that now that's really all the information we have but we have to remember that there was one vertical asymptote which means you have two pieces and this is goofy there's nothing really to help us right now but you just have to understand that because this was odd degree will approach the vertical asymptote in opposite or from opposite ends. So here I went to negative infinity, which means over here will be positive infinity. And that means I'm going to have something like that. And maybe just to help out, I should extend that a little more so you can really see what I'm what I'm getting at. And now this is not perfect, it's a sketch, but it understands, or hopefully you understand that because I went down forever from the left, I have to go up, or from up forever on the right side of this vertical asymptote. All right? So that is our full graph. Let us take a look at another one. How am I doing? Okay. Let's, I can I can do this. We got this. We got this. Um, we need to factor. It's the same thing. It's going to be rinse, repeat a lot, guys. All of these are going to turn out to be very, very similar. I see I can take a 4 out of everything, so I'm going to do that first. So I have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7x minus, what is that, 14? Yeah. All right. Oh, I think I'm going to have to factor by grouping on both of these, okay? So let's start this. Uh, let's see, 4. And I know I am going to have to take out an x squared. So x squared, x plus 2, negative 7, x plus 2. Let's take out another x squared, I believe, x squared, which leaves me with another x plus 2. This time I can take out a negative 16, x plus 2. All right, so when we clean this up, this should look like this, x squared minus 7, x plus 2, x squared minus 16, x plus 2. If you want, you can keep going right now, though we, we know some things are going to clean up, but really we should understand this will go to x minus root 7, x plus root 7 with an x plus 2, and lastly, on the bottom, x minus 4, x plus 4, x plus 2. All right, so this is fully factored. 
we now know for our domain we can say that we have all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 2 or plus minus 4. All right. If we take a look, hopefully we all agree, we can cancel out these x plus 2's. So now we're going to have 4 x minus root 7, x plus root 7, all over x minus 4, x plus 4. That is simplified. We should call this r of x. Sorry about that. Bad habits. I should not be teaching you guys bad habits. Our whole is going to be at negative 2. Okay, our whole will be at negative 2. In this case, guys, and I know it's kind of goofy, I would, I would plan on putting this into somewhere nice. Like, this could be really, really nasty. If you hopefully agree with me, like anywhere we were able to cancel out these x plus 2s. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to plug in this negative 2 right here. Uh, because that will allow me to kind of keep this a little nicer than having to do negative 2 minus root 7, etc. Okay, so if I plug in negative 2, I get 4. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. All right, so negative 12. And let's see here. 4 minus 16 is another negative 12. So we are, have a hole at negative 2, comma, 1. All right. X-intercepts, we know this is the zeros of numerator. Numerator. So that's nice and easy. That's just going to be plus minus root 7. All right. Uh, Y-intercept, we know is when x equals 0. I would probably do the same thing that we did earlier but with or with the whole but instead of plugging in negative 2 plug in a 0 so right here if I plug in a 0 that's negative 7 negative 7 times 4 is negative 28 so 0 comma negative 28 over negative 16 uh, what do we got there what's going on could divide by 4 so 7 fourths Seven fourths. Cool. Vertical asymptotes. We have two of them, right? Two things or two pieces left in the denominator. So we have x equals plus minus four. Lastly, we take a look at end behavior. If we look at the original, hopefully we see same degree. So we take the ratio of the coefficients, four over one. All right, we are now ready to put all of this together into a picture. So vertical asymptotes, plus minus 4. So let's go positive 4, something like that. Oh, sorry, guys, my bad. And another one at negative 4. And we had a horizontal asymptote, asymptote, sorry, at y equals 4. Hopefully you guys are already kind of figuring this out. But because there are two vertical asymptotes, I'm going to need a piece to the left of it, in the middle, and the right. So I'm going to have three pieces to this graph. All right. Uh, what are some other hints we had? We know that we had a hole at negative 2, comma, 1. Negative 2 comma 1 was a hole. We also knew our x-intercepts were at plus or minus root 7. Plus or minus root 7, all I really care about is that you know that 7 is between 4 and 9. And when you square root 4 and 9, that's 2 and 3. So you know that the square root of 7 has to be somewhere between 2 and 3. So I'll just put it maybe like right here. And then, of course, the negative one as well. And we also had our y-intercept at 7 fourths. Or what do we got there? That's uh, the one, and, 1 and 3 fourths. So something like that. All right. So now it looks like we have a lot of information to help us graph this middle. I can do something like this.
All right. That's really nice and easy. You're going to have to use a little bit of intuition to graph the rest of this. And again, by that, I really just mean what was true about the degrees of these asymptotes. They were both one, or they were both odd, which means you're going to have to approach from the opposite ends. You approach the vertical asymptotes from opposite ends. So if this one went down, this one's going to have to be up. Same thing over here on the other side, right? Down, up. And now you really just use the other horizontal asymptote to help you graph the rest of it. So something like that. All right. Oh, I just crossed it. Great. Good job, Mr. R. All right. Oh, let's see here. Shoot. Nope. We have to do the next one. We have to, have to, have to do the next one just because it's a little bit different. I know it's getting long. Stick with me again. You're not going to have another video on this stuff. So just this is it. This is it. All right, last example, same, same starting ideas, same starting ideas. We want a factor. All right, this is a trinomial, x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 9, so it can factor like this. The bottom, we can already do a little bit right there. Hopefully you guys recognize there's more to do in the top. So I'm going to continue this, and I'm going to say... I have x minus 3, I have x plus 3, I have x minus 1, I have x plus 1, all over x minus 2, x plus 2. All right, now nothing cancels, nothing cancels, so really, I'm just going to write same as above for my simplify, or to simplify the equation, I'm just going to write same as above. My domain all real numbers, but x cannot equal plus or minus 2. Now hopefully you agree with me that because nothing canceled, we do not have a hole. And we know that these are both going to be vertical asymptotes. So I can write that right now. Um, x-intercepts are pretty easy. Zeros of numerator. So this is, let's see here, I have plus minus 3 comma 0 plus minus 1 comma 0. I have a ton of them. Got a lot of them. For the y-intercept, you plug in 0. You can look really anywhere you want, guys. I mean, one thing, even when we were doing polynomials, one of the easiest places to plug in 0 was into the original, because you know that this will be 0, 0, so you're really just at 9 over negative 4. So 0, and then negative 9 fourths is my y-intercept. And again, I just got that by plugging in 0 and 0 and 0. It just becomes 9 over negative 4. All right, now, this is why we had to do this one, why I needed to do this one. We need to long divide. Why do we need to long divide? Because the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator. So x to the fourth, remember your placeholders. They will help out just to st help you stay a little bit more organized. And we start. Well, nice and easy. x squared, right? So we have x to the fourth minus 4x squared. But of course, we need to change all the signs. Minus plus. Cancel. Nothing. Negative 6x squared. Bring everything down. All right, we can go one more time, right? I have this x squared. And it's going into x squared, so I know that I need, just need a negative 6. At this point, I want you to understand, you're, you already know you're going to be done. right? If I go and I distribute this, so negative 6x squared and positive 24, right? if I cancel this out, you guys know this, this term is always supposed to go to 0. So you know that you're not going to have anything left that you're going to be able to get x squared into. So Stop the minute that you can. I don't want you to work forever. Now you have to decide and understand that because this is quadratic, this is called an other. All right, which means we don't have an oblique and we don't have a horizontal. Whew, okay, here we go. This is this is going to be a little a little bit crazy, a little crazy. 
let's start to plot what we know. And usually we start with vertical asymptotes, so I'm going to I'm going to continue with that. Plus and minus two. So I plot that. And the minus two, something like this. Okay. The reason that I'm doing this one is basically because of this other asymptote. We need to remember how to graph this. This is a quadratic, and it's being shifted down 6. So we go down 6, and we use our growth pattern. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 3. 5. 7. Same thing the other way. And now I dash it, because it is an asymptote. It is not part of the graph, so you cannot make it solid. It has to be dashed or dotted. Now this looks pretty intense to me, but we can do this. We know what we have to do. We have to use our hints to help us out. We have x-intercepts that we can plot. So I have the easiest ones right here at negative 1 and positive 1. I do also have some at negative 3 and positive 3, so we should mark them. We know that we had a y-intercept at 0, comma, negative 9 fourths, or negative 2.25, so something like that. And now we use our asymptotes to help. This is nice. The middle is going to be really nice. You know that there are no other x-intercepts, so this just has to kind of go and use the asymptotes as given. All right. The next part, I don't want you to get frustrated with this. I just need you to use your rules of asymptotes. What was true from the original? The degrees were odd, which means they're going to approach the vertical asymptotes from opposite ends. So if this was positive or going up forever, it's going to be negative over here. And then just use your x-intercept and your other asymptote to help you graph. Same thing on the other side. It was positive over here on the left side, so it's going to be negative on the right side. And you use your x-intercept and your asymptote, oop, that's not good, to help you graph the rest. Now I know this is kind of tricky and it's kind of intuitive, but if you zoom super, super far out, like right now this is just negative 10 to 10, if you made this negative 1,000 to 1,000, you would barely even be able to see what's going on in the middle, and what you would really see is the end behavior, which is a parabola. Okay? So, this was a good introduction to graphing. I know it was a little longer. I hope you stuck with me. We went through about four graphs, and I think now that you have this knowledge and these skills, these are going to become nice and easy for you guys. All right? So have a good day. See you next time.